All right, welcome back. It is Thursday's Off the Ball, and I'm delighted to be joined by Donegal footballer Michael Murphy. How are you keeping, Michael? All good, Nathan. Thank you. All good. Uh, You're finally beginning to get there. Thank you. <laughs> to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank Christ for that. <laughs> I second that. Second that. Uh, how have you been keeping? Good. Uh, not too bad. Um, three kind of ways. I think the first the first couple of weeks a bit of a novelty to everything, but new and different and at home and. Uh, yeah, middle part of the area then just beginning to adjust to a new norm and kind of hoping to see wondering and worrying if there's going to be football this year um, and then finally now it seems to be phase three where we're beginning to get a bit of um, a bit of light and a bit of kind of a, a bit of hope really I think that there's going to be actually finally football and hurling this year and um, yeah that's been, that's been kind of strange yeah, I don't think I'd ever really fully people were asking me you know where had you been did you find your ability or did you think it was an increased chance you were able to relax over the last number of weeks and months? And I mm. think it was, has been kind of an thing, but yeah, I've been kind of on edge all the time in terms of feeling there's something going to be, something that's going to be pounced on you at any stage and just wanting to try and keep the body right and, and keep taking over. So that's kind of the way I've been feeling. I suppose it's, it seems to be more, it seems to be a few more dates now added in terms of club football and, and county football that we can, that we can kind of plan to, you know. And away from the football, how's life been? Because you're a business owner, you've got Michael Murphy Sports and Letter Kenny. You're a small business owner, they've been decimated by this. Like, how's, how's it been from a business point of view and how have you been able to deal with it over the last few months? Yeah, we kind of, we closed early, probably one of the earliest, really. We closed, I think, maybe a five, four or five days prior to the lockdown. Um, I was just getting to a stage from the information that we were receiving about the distancing and about the spread of the virus. I just, I says, I just couldn't, I they couldn't figure a way how we could keep the shop open in terms of people trying on clothes and et cetera, et cetera. So I think from the staff point of view and from just the general customer point of view coming in through the door, we, we closed. We still kept online up and running. Uh, obviously, it kind of reduced staffing levels and, mm. and kind of at, at, at basically with protective measures in place. But um, I think that the news we got last week, uh, from a business point of view, from a you know a, a, you know a, a general person point of view, and from a footballing point of view, I think it's there was a real confidence given out last week from both the government and from the GA that the things are beginning to come back to normal. It was a very definite sort of um, a definite sort of kind of message came out. So um, from that point of view, we got the shop back up and running on Monday, right. and. Uh, yeah, training now. Starting to hopefully look forward to a bit of, bit of training now again fairly shortly. And were there concerns at any stage? I'm sure it must have crossed your mind when you're worrying and wondering what might happen as to whether you'd be able to get the shop open again? I probably did. We were, we, um, we been honest what we did, we, we, we fairly, we ran a sale fairly quickly on, on online. We predicted that, that probably that this was, we were going to be in lockdown for quite a, quite a while. Um, so we tried to turn as much of the stock just into and to cash as quickly as possible at a reduced rate. And um yeah, that's what we did, just with the hope of having something there so we could go and rebuy stock now in the current situation that we're at just to reopen because in general in a small business you're just working from from week to week, from month to month in terms of cash flow. Um so we're very fortunate in that way to have a bit of success with that initial kind of online sale that we did immediately once we close down just gives us to say that a little bit of breathing space or a bit of resource to kind of put back in now to the business to, to start it back up like you know i know in dublin the first few weeks it was surreal when i'd be in the office on a thursday evening when i finish i might go for a wander around south william street and grafton street and you, one of the evenings didn't see another soul not a shop open literally not a person walking the streets and over the last couple of weeks it's really started to pick up again it's still strange when you're walking past grogan's or any of the pubs and yeah. none of them open and then the good weather there was nobody congregating from what you've seen over the last few days in, in letter kenny that now that we're into the second phase and shops are allowed open again are people willing to go back out and spend are they are people coming through the door at a similar rate as they would have pre-lockdown? Yeah, there's, it's definitely a mix. There's definitely more cars there. There's certain areas of Letter Kenny, like in any town or as you say in any city, where you notice crowds, you just you accept big crowds are going to be there, like in certain car parks or in certain corners of streets. And and definitely it was crazy to see them quiet. Letter Kenny was no different. However, now I definitely did see a change there come Monday. And I got a feeling from speaking to people over the weekend since kind of Friday or the end of last week's news, the positive news that we got, that 
people are ready, they're ready to get back out there. Now that has to be still tapered then with the actual the the necess necessity then to actually continue to keep social mm -hmm. distancing and whatnot. But people are there's definitely more people out around that are Kenny. But at the same time, you can still see going to meet them, there's still that little bit of standoffish nature of yeah, I know we're back out and about here, but like, you know, cop on essentially too, you know. Yeah, it, it, it must be very difficult for, for shop owners to get that balance of creating a safe space where people feel like they can come in, but also that it's worthwhile, that you can still make money out of this, that in the busy periods, you can still get enough people through the doors to, to make it worthwhile opening those doors. Yeah, that's something I suppose, like, I mean, that's what you do fall like, and I mean, we're, we're a small, we have an online presence and we try to push it as much as we can. However, it does lay on a possible they did to, to kind of, to suppose to, to match the big independence. So you do rely on, on the, I suppose we hope that the, the service we can provide from the customers coming through the door and the experience that they have, or maybe the expertise that you can offer them in terms of footwear and things like that. So that definitely has been a lot more trickier to navigate in terms of just getting enough numbers to come through the door. Uh, because I say the moment you do open your doors, the cost just rocket, you know, wages are going to rocket, you know, everything else, I trust that everything rockets. So you need to just, you know, balance that with getting enough people through the door and enough cash under the till. But at um, the same time, you have to give it a go. You can't be defeatist and we can't wait. Um, at the same time, you have to try and pull on as methodically as we possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> pull on sounds like the sort of phrase you'd use on a regular basis in a dressing room. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Harsh on with it. <laughs> I, I think you, you probably summed up the different sides to this right at the start when you said there, there's the personal side, there's the business side, and there's the sporting side. So that's the business side. From the personal side, and as a sports person, you'd be well used to dealing with uh, setbacks, disappointments. You'd probably have quite a bit of resilience built up and but built around your, your sporting career. When something like this happened, something almost otherworldly, like did it knock you sideways at all or were there things you'd learned through the years you were able to, to fall back on so that mentally you did stay strong? There was there was definitely moments like um but I was I was kind of as I said to people like I was kind of aware of moments where I found myself literally going up the wall. Like I was aware that it was happening to me and I was aware right. that right let's knock yourself back straight let's take a step back let's relax let's pick up the phone speak and i was aware of them like and i didn't let it drift too often but there definitely had been more moments um yeah the, like it's it, it, it was it definitely was kind of different like you know the one thing the perspective that i've kind of got from it I, I love playing gaelic football and i love trying to better myself as a gaelic footballer and i always thought that was my numero uno that was my number one one, number one wish that was my, 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 my reasoning or my why as you call it but the mm. more I realise I think it's more the the actual being part of a team and actually the social element and having the fun and having the crack as a team and having those sitting in the dressing room and having a soft conversation with the fella next to you um, that you took for granted as you mm. were tying your laces um, now you had to go on to a Zoom call to speak to that person that might have taken a half an hour whereas you're able to have a wee 30 second conversation so uh, I think I hope that I'll have a better appreciation for that um, when we when we go back. Definitely. Yeah, that's the big test for everybody. There was a sense that there would be a a, a new normal, and there would be a, an appreciation for what we have. And suddenly, life suddenly starts to take over again, and you get back into the routine, and you get yeah. back into the slog, and you try and keep those little nuggets, and try and keep that fresh in your head. Yeah, you're not. And I mean, likewise, we're not to be fooled to say we're not going to absolutely carry everything from this from this period back into our life, but even going to pick up one or two things and, and um, you know, even Zoom calls for us here in, in, in Donegal, there's definitely a, there's been a, a new kind of, I suppose we've become Zoom literate, I think I used to <laughs> use the word there one of the times where we actually feel we know how to go onto a computer and log on to a call and how we should try and hold ourselves on a call and maybe for us in Donegal that have a lot of people away in college in Dublin, Galway, various places like that or, or even just thinking of lads from Kilcar that might be an hour and a half away from training that we can maybe log on to a call to do that tactical training session. Yeah, yeah. Calling everybody in. So there could be certain positives that we hopefully can can take out of it. But the face-to-face -face contact and picking up body language signals and things like that is something that we don't just get on Zoom like we get on real life, you know. 
talking to a lot of sports people over the last couple of months, uh, something that comes up is about the balance in their life and focus solely on sports. Understandably, even more so obviously with professional sports people, and you have the balance of of work and sport. But have there been times as well where you've questioned the amount of commitment you've had to give over the years, the amount of commitment you gave, that suddenly you have this free time to, no, you couldn't do much, but suddenly there's a lot of hours in the day, because I'd imagine your life for the last decade has been just hell for leather, very few spare hours over the course of a week. Probably funny, it's probably one of the first times where the, in the back of the head, the, the, haven't really set it out, but the, the idea of retirement come into your head, right. in terms of what it potentially could could look like or you know how those days could look like mm. um that crept on every now and then like to to what it would look like and and um you know, what, <laughs> what, what did it look like, like? <laughs> what did it look like very good day um yeah still craving to watch some form of sport i know that that's been the big one geez like just to watch any form of sport at all i think we were speaking about it earlier just to I think sport is going to be part of it anyway one way or another mm. um but yeah, spare time, definitely at home here. I live at home with mum and dad and there's only really the three of us here. And I would say in the last, you know, 15 odd years, the three of us, there's only three of us in the house, but we hadn't spent basically two hours a day together any day of the week. Yeah. And that kind of just roll reverse to where we're spending maybe upwards of six, seven, eight hours a day here. You find yourself out in the garden and the wee areas of the, the garden we used to play football, kicking over apple trees. You used to kick over when you were maybe seven, eight, nine years of age, and all of a sudden you're 30 years of age kicking there, and you're looking over to say, Jesus, anybody watching me going mad here? But <laughs> um, but no, it, it was, it was, it was, um, no, it's been different. A wee bit of perspective that I hope we can, we can do. But you know, when you're, when you're in the football and people, you know, speak about the commitment that you get, it doesn't really resonate with you. Um, it doesn't really resonate with me anyway. It's something that I love doing. The people that are probably making the sacrifices are the family and friends that maybe you're missing out on things with. Mm. But um, yeah, no, I, I never looked at a commitment. It's just part of me that I, that I do. In the moment that I probably do look at it, on it as a commitment is the moment that I'll probably put the nail up and hang them up, you know. So when you're when you're running outside and you're just kicking balls over apple trees in a way that's and you're thinking back to doing this as a seven eight year old like are, are you reflecting on your career are you thinking are you taking is it going that deep of geez i did all right you know no i don't think there's ever a fear of that you're trying to figure out where you were the next part you're trying to pick mm. to yourself and 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 cool park and whatever x number of months amount of weeks time against against her own or whoever that may be that's that's to me again where my head's at or you're thinking back Probably fortunate in a way, I feel anyway for myself, the time that the pandemic probably did happen, it was at a stage towards the back end of the National League where you start to rise and we start to feel your body starting to come around and get ready and get excited and you start to feel fit and you start to feel you're not far away from hitting, hitting where you need to get to. So I was probably on a, over the course of that, I was in a maintenance phase where I wanted to really maintain all those benefits rather mm. than letting them slide. Now, inevitably, you're not going to be able to maintain to that exact same level, but I wanted to try and maintain, and that was always stuck in the back of my head. So there was never really, for me, I kind of mentioned it earlier, a disengagement from what was going to come around the corner, you know? Maybe you won't know the answer to this for four or five years, but... Could there be a benefit to your body long term when you're thinking about retirement and how far you can go? Because like you're such a talismatic figure for Donegal and regularly man marked, big, big hits that you can take, it looks like, but eventually they do all stack up. That actually not having that sort of battering on a on a weekly, monthly basis for a, a considerable period of time could really stand to you. <laughs> soon, soon play out, I'll soon find out fairly <laughs> shortly. Um but uh, no, I have definitely. We've been fortunate. I know you alluded to and I listened to loads of people that have been speaking that I've definitely taken the time to strengthen areas of the body that that need both looked after and need to get stronger to hopefully try and keep me going for another while longer yet. The groin's been one of them. I've been very fortunate and you were able to probably spend a bit more time looking at them rather than trying to maybe look at them in a small way but always still have one eye on the game at the weekend or always still have one eye on training tomorrow night so you're able to really look at them for a prolonged period to hopefully try and 
you know, make them again more robust to mm. to, to to withstand the rigors of of um of kind of when when the inter county season and when the club season comes back up and going, you know. You mentioned the Zoom sessions there. Maybe that's again one of the positives, particularly for a county like Donegal, and maybe for pretty much every county outside of the the cities where players are dispersed around the country. That you know you still come together for your physical sessions, but a lot of what you do actually you don't need to be in the same room. How often have you been getting together on Zoom? How often are you in touch with the county squad? I will. We try. We've tried. It's been mixed, probably. We we probably started off. We did quite a lot of collective ones, and like anything, we were we were trying to figure our, our way around it and what was the most effective way to do it. Um, and probably at the start, we we were really much focusing on trying to keep going with our tactical sessions and everything that we were trying to keep pushing towards because we still thought the championship might be just around the corner. But I think once that message came out that it was going to be at least to October, the probably the calls. We, we kind of deciphered them into smaller groups and we um they also became more just about engaging like you know just actually seeing people more so than actually trying to get through work you know what i mean so um i suppose in recent in recent weeks and months we've, we've went into smaller groups the interactions have been a hell of a lot more um people know that don't normally speak speak up and they bring some unbelievable ideas to the table around areas of of tactics and things like that so um very positive and so far the way it has worked out if you know what i mean um mm. we've done some fun things group things um laugh things presentations and um go on yeah different things small fitness classes things like aerobic classes whatnot that um that you laugh at so there's been a there's been definitely a good mixture to it you know i was wondering this with uh with football and with the premier league returning that so many of these brilliant managers like Klopp and Guardiola have rarely had spells like this in their career where they have time to think where they actually have two or three months to rethink it all over again and whether there will be some sort of big tactical shifts as they do return when you're talking there in, in Donegal do you think that this period when football does resume because of the break and because of the time that people now have to actually go through things that we might see different styles of play will it be a different Donegal well and see <laughs> there hopefully like I'm I'm a big believer like and that's always been one of my arguments around the whole personally the one of the arguments around the whole you know changing rules changing rules changing rules like I think we need to come up with more ideas as as players and as and as and as managements to try and to try and work within the boundaries and come up with new tactics and ways of doing things that kind of push the boundaries and as you say, maybe change the game rather than actually changing the rules, you know. So, mm. um, yeah, it'll give time, teams more time to think, but, you know, as well as thinking and formulating strategies and new plans, a big part of that is actually implementing them and practicing them at training. And I suppose this period hasn't allowed us maybe to do that outside of maybe using our imagination out the back with apple trees. <laughs> we do now have some sort of a, a plan in place for the return of Gaelic football, both at club and inter-county, and it may well change even again over the coming weeks, and it may return sooner than we expect, but collective sessions to return quite soon, full contact sessions before the end of July, a very short build-up as it stands before club championship, a couple of months of that, and then inter-county training back middle of September, and championship hopefully come the middle of October. What are your thoughts on on what's to come over the weeks and months ahead? There's a lot of debate already of club and county and what initially looked like maybe an 11-week club spell is being eaten into by the, the county team. Like, you're in a difficult position, understandably, but is this a time where we should actually just give the club that breathing space? Yeah, I think, first of all, I suppose, I think the number one thing we want back is all followers, players, supporters, managers, everybody as we want football back, hurling back, everything around games back. Um and I suppose that's the number one thing. So what is games equal? Games equals club and, 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 and county football. Um the two dates that we probably have in mind is we have that late July date and we have the October date. So we look at what is needed between those. Um I look at our own scenario, say in Donegal for example, where we run a club championship that's the senior club championship where there's four groups of four. So you play three games. Mm. One is that going to a quarter final, semi final, final. So there's six weekends possibly in that. So I feel that there's definitely, we're fortunate in a way where I think we can run our six count or six club championship games where county players are in without having to look over your shoulder at training with your county, that you can just fully commit Tuesday, Thursdays, weekend games for that whole eight week period. 
But then at the same time, if we're running an inter county championship in October, mm. we need like there's no other way. I've played it now, so you need at least a three week, four week period in the lead into that. And my fear is if you stretch out the club championship and eat into that three and four week lead in period, that county teams are going to dip in and out the whole way through the club period, if you know what I mean. So I think yeah. there needs to be compromises on both ends. The county championship, the club, cha- the central county championship need to compromise and potentially look at a straight knockout um, in order to finish it in the calendar year in 2020. And then the club championship need to compromise in a way to run it in, a, in an eight-week period too. And as a result, what you'll probably get is two blocks. But at least with the two blocks, at least it's fairly straightforward and the understanding that, yeah, everybody commits to that team for that period. And then everybody commits to that team for that period rather than this grey area. That, and it may set a precedence for the future because there's no point goes denying the elephant in the, moon, or the elephant in the room in terms of the crossover between club and county. It's there week in, week out throughout the season and it could set, set a precedence for the future, you know. Yeah, and there is no better time as we talk about the world changing coming out of this. Why not take advantage of that? Though the problem with sport is someone will always look for an edge. You would love, and it's probably a pipe dream for the GEA to be able to sit down and talk to all the inter-county managers and say, actually, we have this proposal, 14th of September, all county championships will be finished. You will have your players as much as you want for that month. We will give you that as long as you agree not to be putting on sessions on a Tuesday night for the two months previous. That There's a huge opportunity, and it'd be so beneficial to everybody because the one thing coming out of this is we all want the elite inter-county game. But people, men, women, kids, they just need to get out playing again. They just need to get out of the house. They just need that buzz of a little bit of competitive action. 100%. That's the biggest majority of our association. I totally and utterly get that. But I feel as a player that's playing with both, in mm. order to make them fully work, the further that we push and eat into that, what was proposed at the moment, the 11 weeks, then the more likelihood is the inter-county manager and everyone's going to say, well, hold on a minute. I have a knockout game and potentially at the moment, the county final is going to be on 10 days before our first round knockout game. I mean, if that's the case, they're going to want, do you know what I mean? If there is a knockout game on the 17th of October, for example, mm. then, you know, you're going to need to really subtract four weeks from that to allow that team to prepare. And I think if you do subtract four weeks from that, I would like to think, anyway, the responsibility will be on all sides to, to allow players to play away at the club for that six to seven, eight weeks, you know. And I think it'd be, I think it'd be great, like, countrywide club game for eight weeks, max, like, exposure-wise for everything. It would just be powerful, you know. What's your thoughts on playing games behind closed doors? Again, I go back to the ladder and what's the top of the ladder. We want to get games back and playing. Mm. Um, if I had a preference, of course, part of a crowd. Like I, I grew up going to games as a young fella, six, seven, eight years of age, going to Donegal games, going to Glens Foley games. And it was all the usual stereotypical way. You'd write your bonus, <laughs> you'd hop out of the back, you'd get the, the, the boot open, you have your tea and sandwiches, you walk into the game, you chat about the game, you get your program, you fly your flag, you cry when there's a goal scored against you and the, you cheer when there's a goal scored for you. That's part of the whole experience that, that I miss, but it's just it's probably inevitable that it can't be done currently at the moment. So do we just go a year w- without football in order to hopefully get crowds back or do we get football without crowds? It's not ideal, but it's, again, it's a compromise. I think we have to play to try and get something, something back on our, back on our radar again. Mm. How many less scraps per game will there be between Donegal and Tyrone if there's no crowd there to egg you on? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Be interesting there. Um, yeah, the lesson is going to be. It's going to be interesting without without crowds or how it's going mm. to work. I'm, I'm just entirely not, entirely not sure. Could be some people lurking about the the, the outside of the stadium somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows at this stage? Uh, it's been brilliant talking to you, and it's it's great to hear that that you're in good form as well. Where's the fitness at the moment? Are, 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 you, are you naturally fit? Are you, does it come quite easy, or are you really having to? to I know you probably let a little dip from where you were three months ago, but yeah. are, the, are the next um, few weeks going to be tough? No, not not too bad. I think it's been the one big change I found in the inter county game. Anyway, over the last four years, there is no big, huge off season where you basically put on the stone and a half waist anymore. Like, it's just, there's too much catch-up. The National Leagues in early, late January are just, they're at too high of a level to let yourself go in the off-season. So, 
that has been the big shift I've noticed over the last three to four years that you're constantly tapering about or you're constantly on around that 80% zone, 70, 80% zone. Um, and I'd like to think that I'm, I'm fairly much at that, but I will need a, I will need a boost of training now to actually hopefully bring me up towards that 90% zone, you know, and, mm. um, yeah, just looking forward to it, still hungry and still looking forward to it. And, and hopefully the, the body will, will put you, it'll take it off. And uh, give us the exclusive then to finish with when you're having those inner conversations about retirement. What year? What age? What's the, what's the, what date have you set? Oh, Jesus, I, um, I, I think the, the day where I just know myself that I'm not <laughs> even, I'm sure it'll come to everyone. I have a conversation with a few of the boys in the Donegal team that I've kind of, played with over the last mm. number of years and said, well, how do you know or when do you know or what's the story or what's the crack? And they just say, you just, you'll know. You know. Um, so I'm sure there'll be some incident where something will happen that I'll say that's not usual or something will happen, but hasn't happened yet. So I'm not going to just get them thoughts out of my head that I've been having over that lockdown period and, and move on to, to, to looking forward to games again. Yeah, I dare say it'll be a, a few years yet. Uh, Michael, it's brilliant talking to you. You've been chatting to us because uh, you are promoting the toughest trade and that is going to be back again on Virgin Media Sport over the next little while. I know it's been running for the last few weeks. Uh, we've already seen the likes of Aidan O'Shea, Lee Chin, Brenda Maher, Swapping Sports. This all happened initially a couple of years ago, but now it's on uh, Virgin Media Television for everybody to see for exclusive content and to see why AIB are backing club and county. Follow us on at AIB underscore GA on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and AIB.ie forward slash GAA. Do you still keep in touch with Shane Williams from the toughest trade? Funny, I got a message in there a couple of weeks back. He was doing a, a cycle of some sort, I think maybe potentially for the lockdown. I just sent him a message, just a good wishes message in the cycle, and he got straight back. Uh, so he's been uh, been quite good. Uh, he's been interactive a small bit with the Glens Foley social media every ah, now and then, too. So he's. Um, yeah, he's definitely a good one. He's a, a club legend. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, great stuff, Michael. Mind yourself. Perfect, good man. Thanks, Nathan.